Because future-looking statements are inherently subject to risk and uncertainty, our reminder is that you should make any purchasing decisions or investment decisions based on products that are currently commercially available. Hi everyone, thank you for joining. My name is Philippe Ozil. I'm a developer advocate on the Salesforce platform. And hi, I'm Sam Raynard. I'm a senior product manager for Salesforce Flow. Welcome. As evidenced by the fact that we are having this session virtually and not in person, the pandemic has affected businesses around the world. As we all remember, these changes were not gradual. Pretty much overnight, we were all working from home and that meant companies needed to transform and digitize their businesses just as quickly. At the center of that transformation is the employee, but it isn't just about keeping the speed of work high. Equally as important is making sure that employees are efficient, happy, and safe. To make sure that employees can work safely from home, ourselves included, companies rely heavily on their IT organizations and their developers. That's why we're launching Einstein Automate, your one-stop shop for building end-to-end -end workflows for every industry. Einstein Automate enables you to compose intelligent workflows with integrated experiences that can reach across any system that your employees are touching. And it enables you to build quickly with pre-built solutions and packaged libraries. Einstein Automate pulls together our automation capabilities across platform, Einstein, MuleSoft, industries, and app exchange. Unfortunately, we don't have the time today to dive deep on all of these products, but what, we'll, what we will do is focus on building dynamic experiences with Salesforce Flow and using Flow to integrate with third-party systems by using MuleSoft Endpoint Platform, external services, and Apex. One key part of intelligent workflows is building dynamic experiences that guide users through those workflows. With that in mind, we're going to highlight some awesome enhancements coming to Flow screens. Thanks to new beta functionality coming in Spring 21, you can customize your screen layouts directly from Flow Builder. Previously, the only way to create layouts in Flow screens was with custom code. Now that capability is at everyone's fingertips. With the new section component, you can add multiple rows with different columns, and you can set each column's width separately. Because this is built on the Lightning design system, Flow columns obey the same responsiveness rules as the rest of Lightning experience. Pretty slick. Now, as we mentioned earlier, Einstein Automate provides several tools to help you automate across every industry. But you might be wondering how do developers fit into this story? By layering extensions on top of those low-code solutions, which admins and developers alike can use to build even more engaging experiences. When it comes to flow screens, the best extension point is Lightning Web Components. In Winter 21, we ga two new LWC features that enable you to make the most of your component code. First is the ability to write screen components using generic S objects, which means you don't need to duplicate the same component to have it work for different objects. Second is the ability to customize the configuration experience of your screen components. While these features don't directly enable you to build better experiences, they do allow you to code smarter. So instead of building the same component over and over again for different objects or responding to the same questions about how to configure your component, you can spend more time on things that do enable more dynamic and intelligent experiences. Let's take this custom quick choice component for an example, which we installed from the automation component sample gallery. Here's what the property editor looks like by default. It takes a lot of inputs and the ordering is by no means logical or straightforward. It's actually alphabetical. Now here's that same component with a custom property editor applied. And what a difference it makes. Instead of a long list of key value pairs, we see useful controls like field pickers and sliders. And the modalities in the component are clear. Certain fields are only visible if the input source is pick list and there's conditional validation on those fields. So how does it work? Each custom property editor is actually an LWC itself referenced from the screen component. The custom property editor receives data from Flow Builder and then dispatches changes back to be stored in the Flow metadata. The good news is you don't have to start from scratch when building your own custom property editor. You'll find a starter pack of common controls on the unofficial SF community. It includes things like object and field pickers, formula editors, as well as a combo box that shows all the available resources in the flow. And the beauty of these features, generic S objects and custom property editors, is they're not isolated to Lightning Web Components. That exact same functionality is also available for custom Apex actions. Now, speaking of Apex, I'm going to pass the baton to Philippe, who's going to talk about how Flow works with other integration technologies available in Einstein Automate. Thanks, Sam. 
Modern apps don't work in silos. They communicate with each other to bring the best experience to the users. Whenever you need a third, call a third party application from within a flow, you can use a custom flow action implemented with Apex. Let's take a look at a basic implementation that just posts a message on Slack. We've taken the simplest approach by using a Slack webhook to avoid building a full-fledged authentication flow. We're using a name credential to store the secret URL that lets us post the message. Let's look at our implementation now. The Slack post class contains a method annotated with advocable variable. This lets the platform take our method as an invocable action that can be used in the flow. The class holds two inner classes that wrap the input and output parameters. These parameters are identified with add invocable variable annotations. We're taking a name credential as an input and a message. And for the output, we are returning a Boolean that indicates whether the operation succeeded and an error message if something went wrong. Just like for Apex triggers, our invocable method needs to be bulkified. In most cases, you're only going to call it once, but it needs to support multiple requests. Here you can see that we're taking a list of input parameters and returning a list of output parameters. In this example, we've built a custom Slack integration class that handles the Slack calls with a post message method. And that's it, that's the code of the action. We can add the icing on the cake now by plugging in a custom property editor. And yes, these also work on actions, not just on screen components. Let's see how good this looks in our org. I'm gonna add our action to this flow. Let's edit it to see the custom property editor. With this custom UI, we can use a mix of custom and baseline web components to create a form that provides a great user experience for our flow admins. For example, here, we have a comma box that returns the list of available name credentials. And here we have a rich text input. So there's no risk of errors and we can preview the message here. While our basic Slack integration is flexible and functional, it has some drawbacks. First, it's limited to, to Slack channels that we have imported as dedicated name credentials. Secondly, it requires about 60 lines of Apex, and that's not even counting the related test code. So what if I told you that you can do even better without any code? We're excited to share that we're working on a pilot that lets you generate an external service from an open API 3.0 schema. What's so cool about this new feature is that it automatically generates up to 25 actions from the schema operations. All of that without requiring a single line of code. And as the saying goes, code that you don't write is code that you don't have to test or maintain. In case you're wondering, OpenAPI specification, or OAS in short, is a standard that describes RESTful APIs in a way which allows both humans and computers to discover and understand the capabilities of a service. OAS was formerly known as the Swagger specification. Sounds promising, right? Let's take a look at this. We're gonna use the same example as earlier, but this time we're gonna post our Slack message with MuleSoft. I'm not in MuleSoft Flow Designer, and I'm looking at a flow that integrates with Slack. The flow starts by exposing an HTTP endpoint. Note the dynamic paths that contain the two parameters, channel and message. We use a transform operation on the second card. This allows us to extract the channel and message parameters from the incoming HTTP requests URI, URI parameters. Finally, we use one of the pre-built mule connectors to post a message to Slack. We use our parameters to set the channel and the message. Let's now switch to our Salesforce org. We've defined a name credential that specifies our Mule app instance base URL. The next step is to create the external service. We enter a name, select our name credentials for MuleSoft, and now we can provide an OES schema in JSON. Copying over here a simple open API schema that I wrote to describe how to call our MuleSoft flow, 
let me walk you through the important bits. Here you can see our endpoint path with two parameters, the channel and the message. Here's the definition of our parameters with their name, description, type, and the fact that they're required. That's it. That's a really simple schema with just one operation. Let's move to the next step. The schema is parsed and we can now select between 1 and 25 operations from it. Here we can find that the post stack message operation with its two parameters. And here we can select it and move to the final step. We can now review the action that will be generated from the operation. Notice how the parameters and descriptions are carried over from the schema. We click done and that's it. We can now use our new action in a flow. Let's open the flow and add the action to it. Here we can see a new category with the name of our external service. From there, we can select our action. We configure it by giving it a label and an API name. And we assign the channel and the message parameters. Now that we have configured our flow, let's save it and then test it. We fill our name, the first screen. This executes our flow action that calls our MuleSoft app and posts the stack notification. And here's the notification. That's how you integrate fast with the best tool for the job. You can go full code when you want to have some flexibility and control. And you can save some time by importing actions from an external service with OpenAPI. Always keep in mind that these two options are not exclusive. They add up to deliver the best value. I'll now pass it back to Sam, who is going to cover the amazing features that are coming up on the Einstein Automate roadmap. Thanks, Philippe. There's a lot of exciting enhancements to look forward to. Let's check them out. We're continuing to invest really heavily in Flow, with both admins and developers in mind. Multi-column screens, which you saw earlier in this session, will be going from pilot to beta in spring and then to GA in summer. In the coming release, you'll also see features that make it easier to work with callouts from screen flows and more debugging enhancements like visual path tracing. For the foreseeable future, you can look forward to continued investment in better debugging, error handling, testing, and monitoring. Now on to external services. The pilot that Philippe mentioned is what's referred to here as enhanced schema. It includes support for the OpenAPI 3.0 spec. Then further down the road, our plan is to make actions generated from external services available to Einstein bots and Apex. And moving forward, the legacy version of external services is will be end of life in summer. So if you're still using that, it's time to upgrade. Now, finally, let's talk about MuleSoft. Today, you saw how you can integrate Salesforce with your MuleSoft Anypoint APIs by using external services. We're going to make it even easier to to generate MuleSoft actions and use them in flows. And then later, we'll support them in other places like Einstein bots. Last but not least, we're launching MuleSoft Composer, the fastest and easiest way to connect your apps and data to Salesforce. Composer empowers admins and developers alike to automate integrations in ways they've never done before and frees up development time for the entire organization. And that's a wrap. Check out this trail mix for additional details about all the things we covered today. You'll find information about the multi-column screens and enhanced schema pilots, documentation about custom property editors and invocable Apex actions, as well as some fantastic trailhead content. Thank you so much for tuning in. Enjoy the rest of your sessions. Metasoa Snapshot is a comprehensive org management solution to help manage, clean up, and optimize your orgs. Identify and eliminate technical debt and unused metadata. Visualize profiles with edit, merge, and assignment capabilities. Then deploy data and metadata with clicks, not code, designed for admins and developers. Check out Metasoa on App Exchange to learn more. Did you know that our brains receive 11 million bits of information every second? However, we can only consciously process around 40 bits. This is called unconscious bias. We all have it, but these mental shortcuts can create harmful stereotypes. 
Skilling up on equality makes us a stronger community. Learn more on Trailhead and earn the Impact of Unconscious Bias badge. Hello from Germantown, Maryland. I welcome you to Dream TX. Bonjour à tous depuis Genève, en Suisse, and welcome to Dream TX. Hey, Einstein, Dream TX, it's finally here. Have fun! <laughs> fun! Hi, I'm Jen, and this is my customer 360 story. We use Salesforce in our pre-sales motion from the first touch all the way to close and beyond. But at Gigster, we use even more of the platform because we built our own objects that we use to run our services projects. A dog walked straight in while I was talking. So one of the things I'm really proud about at Gigster is that we can use the Salesforce Customer 360 platform to look at how our go-to-market motion is doing against our objectives that we set. Because we have such a well-aligned process that involves the marketing and sales organizations and we use the same measurements to gauge health, marketing and sales leadership can look at Salesforce and we can understand where the next dollar should best be placed for maximum impact. I've used Salesforce as the single source of truth for my marketing and sales measurement for many, many, many Many years. I feel like the technology goals and the humanity goals of the company are well aligned to what I need in my business and in my life. That was my customer 360 story. 